Hey guys, we're going to teach you how to make a leather sheath today and take something like this, plain old piece of leather, and turn it into something like that. Nice leather sheath. Okay guys, as for the supplies that you're going to need for this, you're going to need some vegetable tanned leather. Hopefully this light's not too, too bright. Um, but it's kind of like nighttime and got to use indoor lighting so I'm gonna need some vegetable tanned leather this is four to five ounce thick and just a little quick thing on ounces when leather is referred to in ounces one ounce is equal to one millimeter so four to five ounce is about one sixteenth of a uh, of a uh, of an inch so just a little thing on that Vegetable tanned leather is really easy to work with, very easy to tool and make some cool designs on, and it's probably the, one of the best leathers you can make sheaths out of. And you're going to need some waxed thread. It doesn't necessarily have to be waxed, but it'll stay nicer longer and it's more durable. So some waxed thread. You're going to need some needles. These needles have uh, pretty wide eyes on them, so you can thread them pretty easily for the pretty thick, uh, what's it called, thread. You're going to need some dye and a protectant, so a little finish finisher. Glue, you're going to need some glue, this is some EcoFlow. This stuff works great, it's very strong. And some type of knife. This is just one of the best things to cut out with, so that's what I like to use. Some things that um, make life a whole lot easier. Oh, something that you're going to want to have to do some detailing and outlining of your sheath is end of a spoon. And if you have something laying around like this, this is just a blunted screwdriver that I made. Just sand it down the end so it makes for a nice smooth tip that's not going to rip leather. Um, some type of flat instrument. This is a sharpie. Good for smoothing out corners and mistakes that you might have made. Might have made. Some tools that aren't necessary, necessarily needed, but are just nice to have. Are this little uh, thread marker. You run this along the side of your uh, leather to make marks to where you're going to put your thread. And not much more I don't think but a little thing to note on an awl um, something that's really helpful is getting one with uh, it's like a spear so it's flat on two sides and then skinny on that side so then you can stick it in really easily and rotate it and make a nice hole so that's just a little bit on that and we're gonna get started so the first thing you're gonna need is some vegetable tanned leather and you're gonna have to soak it pretty good so get it nice and soaked, just hold it under the tap for a few minutes to make it nice and soft and pliable. Okay? You're gonna need your knife. I'm gonna do the mini griptilian. Took the pocket clip off of it. It feels like a totally different knife. It's pretty nice. And something that's helpful, where did I put it? Well, I'll just make a new one. Take a plastic bag, some plastic wrap or something. Cut out a little piece enough to cover your knife just to prevent any rust that may occur and lightly wrap your knife in it like so okay next thing you're gonna do let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit better next thing you're gonna do is get your leather where you'd like it on your knife as to about as high up as you'd like it that's about where I'd like mine and you're gonna start forming it so you're just gonna start Pushing down the sides, good. Just getting the general shape of the knife. Make sure you still have it in the spot that you want it. Just get the general shape formed. And once you get that general shape, then you're going to start tooling it and detailing the outside of the leather. So it's kind of shifting a little bit under here, but not a problem. So this. Try to keep it in the same place, 
move around all the little crevices of the knife and get the general shape. As you can see, it's starting to take form, and that's good. Just get it nice and tight. And you can make a really nice, tight sheath so your knife isn't going to fall out. Okay, so once you get that general shape formed, you're going to start detailing. Okay guys, <clears throat> so I got that all formed, and I don't think that I want to do any tooling with the outside edges with this, but just for a little demonstration, I've got a piece of leather that I just stamped down, it was an old design and it didn't turn out quite as well, and I let it dry so couldn't get those marks out. So this is what I'll demonstrate on, and find something. Okay, so say I wanted to detail this sharpie. Form it around your sharpie like so. Get it nice and formed around the object the way you'd like it. Then you'd take your blunt-ended object and go around it. So it'd create that nice line, so a little bit of detailing, and that's basically what I would do with this normally. I've done it on all my other sheaths, but it's not quite needed, so you would just go along the outside, but I don't really think it's needed too much. So that's basically what you do, but just keep pushing on your leather and getting it nice and snug and it's going to turn out pretty darn nice. So I'm probably going to just dry this and I'll bring you guys right back. So one second. Okay guys, we have our leather sheath all dried. Holds the ni knife nice and snug. Pretty tight. Got a nice imprint in there. Fits very well. And now we're going to cut it out. So. You're just going to take uh, a rolling knife or utility blade and just cut it out. I'm not going to do this on camera necessarily. I'll do the first cut on camera. But I don't want to really mess anything up if I do it wrong. So, just going to get it to about the length that you want it. Just go around your sheath and get the general shape and that'll act as your outside and then you can put your stitching within that. So I'm just gonna finish this and then I'll bring you guys right back. Okay guys, what we're gonna do now is this. Uh, we're gonna make the grooves for the stitching and anything you hear in the background, that's probably my macaw. So she hasn't shut up all morning, so just a little heads up on that. So this is a little uh, groove maker. Just put it on the edge and run it across. So. Let's start that. Let me put the knife back in the thing to keep it stable. So you're gonna just slide it down. And it looks like I messed up a little bit since I'm trying to do this behind a camera. So let's get back on this. Sorry if I may be out of frame, but just want to try to do a good job. This darn plastic out of my way. Well, that didn't quite turn out how I wanted it. Should have took my time a little bit better, but um, just focus in there. That's what you're basically making. Groove around that your stitching is going to go into. Okay, so uh, the next thing you're going to do 
is start making the backing. Okay guys, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to glue this front piece onto a piece of our uh, shoulder, our leather shoulder. And what that's going to do is it'll ensure that we have a piece big enough to cover this whole front piece, the back of the whole front piece. And then we're going to cut out a long strip that will be able to cover the back and form the loop. So we're going to apply the glue onto the back. Don't need a whole lot. Hopefully I'm in frame there. Okay, now we're just going to stick this into position. And that seems about right. And just going to let it dry. I'll bring you guys right back once it's dry. Well, once it's dried and cut out, that is. Okay guys, so that's the piece with the uh, back put on. And what we're going to do is wet this back piece right here where it bends. And then we're going to bend it down and let it dry. Okay. And as you can see, the knife fits nice and snug. Not coming out of there. And once we sew it, it'll be a bit tighter. And it's going to turn out nice. So I'm just going to go wet that down, fold it, and let it dry. Okay, guys, so I wet the spine and folded it over, and it's pretty much dry now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut off the excess. So I'm going to hold my blade right next to the side and just cut down and cut everything off so it's nice and even. And then we're going to start punching the holes for the, for the thread. Or at least start marking them. So we're going to cut all this off. Okay, that looks pretty good. First, we're going to take a, uh, what's it called, stitch marker. Where did I put it? Sorry about this, guys. Just got to find my tools. So, stitch marker. Just going to run that along the grooves that I made. Uh, just you guys. So, just going to get that lined up. And start marking the stitching. Okay, so we can get you in there. You can see all the stitching is marked. So now we're going to take an awl. I'm going to use an awl that's a bit fatter, and that'll pretty much get everything marked out. And then I'm going to use a thinner one that's more sharper, or sharper and uh, makes the holes bigger. And that's going to go through and finish, oh sorry, getting framed there. That's going to go through all the holes and get them finished up. So this is, the fatter all is just going to get everything marked and get the general holes. So I'll do a few for you. Let me just find the first one. Just make sure you put them straight down. Don't want to bump the camera, but I want to be in frame a bit. Uh, start going on this side. And when we start our stitching, I'll go over this in the next little section. But we're gonna only only going to go about halfway down. Sorry, I'm getting framed there. Only going to go about halfway down and uh, do our stitching about halfway. And then we're going to glue the bottom, about this piece, about that size. And then we're going to continue our stitching through this piece. So, a little example of that would be right here, how it's continued right along. So, I'm just going to finish making these holes and I'll bring you guys right back.